Good day and welcome to the GoPro's Q4 2020 Earnings Conference Call. Today's conference is being recorded. At this time, I would like to turn the conference over to Christopher Clark. Please go ahead, sir. Thank you, operator. Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to GoPro's fourth quarter and full year earnings conference call. With me today are GoPro CEO Nicholas Woodman and CFO and COO Brian McGee. Before we get started, I'd like to remind everyone that our remarks today may include forward-looking statements. Forward-looking statements and all other statements that are not historical facts are not guarantees of future performance and are subject to a number of risks and uncertainties which may cause actual results to differ materially. Additionally, any forward-looking statements made today are based on assumptions as of today, including but not limited to uncertainty related to the duration and impact of the COVID-19 pandemic. This means that results could change at any time and our commentary about business results and outlook is based on the information available as of today's date. We do not undertake any obligation to update these statements as a result of new information or future events. Information concerning our risk factors is available in our most recent annual report on Form 10-K for the year ended December 31st, 2019, and quarterly report on Form 10-Q for the quarter ended September 30th, 2020, each of which is on file with the Securities and Exchange Commission, and as updated in future filings with the SEC, including the annual report on Form 10-K for the year ended December 31st, 2020. Today, we may discuss gross margin, operating expense, net profit and loss, as well as basic and diluted net profit and loss per share in accordance with GAAP and additionally on a non-GAAP basis. We believe that non-GAAP information is useful because it can enhance, can enhance the understanding of our ongoing economic performance. We use non-GAAP reporting internally to evaluate and manage our operations. We choose to provide this information to enable investors to perform comparisons of operating results in a manner similar to how we analyze our own operating results. A reconciliation of GAAP to non-GAAP operating expenses can be found in the press release that was issued this afternoon and which is posted on our website. In addition to the earnings press release, we have posted management, commentary, and slides containing detailed financial data and metrics for the fourth quarter and full year 2020. The management commentary and slides, as well as a link to today's live webcast and a replay of this conference call, are posted on the GoPro Investor Relations website for your reference. All income statement related numbers that are discussed today. Now I'll turn the founder and CEO. Good afternoon, everyone. Before we get started, I'd like to encourage everybody to read the commentary we posted earlier today to the GoPro Investor Relations page on our website. In addition to providing an overview of our quarterly and annual results, plus forward-looking guidance, the commentary provides our thoughts on our business going forward. I will now share some brief remarks, and then we'll go directly into Q&A. In 2020, we evolved GoPro into a more efficient, subscription-oriented, direct-to-consumer business. We grew our GoPro subscriber base by 145% year over year to 601,000 subscribers and generated more than 200 million in cash flow from operations in the second half of the year. This represented 33% of our second half revenue and contributed to a year end cash balance of $328 million. Strong Q4 performance resulted in 39 cents of non gap EPS for the quarter, and $0.08 cents of non-GAAP EPS for the year. We achieved this with disciplined expense management, an approach we are committed to maintaining. Our 2020 performance amidst the pandemic demonstrates GoPro's enduring relevance as a personal experience sharing solution for consumers and powerful creative tool for professionals. Looking ahead, Our plan is to continue super serving our core customers with outsized GoPro subscriber benefits while expanding our relevance to users of other cameras and smartphones through software subscription offerings. We believe we can maintain our rapid pace of innovation 
launching exciting new hardware and software products backed by significant world-class marketing, all within reasonable spend levels that are directionally in line with 2020. We're excited about 2021, even amidst the pandemic. We've proven time and again that GoPro can thrive during challenging times. We believe the steps we're taking to strengthen our business today will benefit us in spades when the world eventually rebounds from the pandemic in earnest. But fortunately, as a business, we do not have to wait for that to happen. I want to thank our employees around the world for their resilience and adaptability throughout 2020. Your dedication and world-class execution is why we are well positioned for the future. And now, operator, we're ready to take questions. All right, if you would like to ask a question, you may signal by pressing star one on your telephone keypad. If you're using a speakerphone, please make sure your mute function is turned off to allow your signal to reach our equipment. A voice prompt on the phone line will indicate when your line is open. Again, that is star one to ask a question. And we'll pause for just a moment to allow everyone an opportunity to signal. All right, we'll take the first question from Paul Schwang with J.P. Morgan. Hi, uh, thanks for taking my question. Um, so, so just on your full year 21 guidance, you know, given the large kind of seasonal mix and, and sensibility there and it's way this higher uh, year than you've done in the past, and then I have a follow-up. Yeah, hi, Paul. This is Brian. Um, well, let's talk about 2020. We uh, sold through 3.6 million units, and we shipped in about 2.8 million units. And that delta is because we took channel inventory down about 800,000 units and, and ended the year at about 650,000 units in the channel. So that's an important distinction uh, to make. Uh, and, and we think we've got the, the right channel inventory uh, in place. As we look to 21, um, we, we expect to continue uh, on the D2C transition and shift our revenue up from you know, the 32% uh, uh, that we had in 2020 to 38 to 42% in, uh, in 2021. I'd say we have very good visibility into the first quarter and our trends from the sell-through and selling perspective um, are hitting the mark uh, related to our uh, guide of 185 uh, million in Q1. Um, and so um, we, we think uh, on a range that uh, sell, sell through is going to be in the 3.4 to 3.6 million units uh, right now and sell in in the kind of 3.2 to 3.4, so we may see about 100,000 unit uh, or so reduction in the channel, uh, even in 21. And that's really due to the fact that we're growing, our expectation is to grow more in D to C, and so we, we would continue to trim uh, retail inventories a bit and keep them at healthy levels uh, in, uh, going into the end of 21 and into 2022. Gotcha. Thanks for that. And then, you know, your unit sell was off by, you know, maybe around 100K relative to guidance. Kind of, what drove the, the difference there? I noticed um, regionally, EMEA and Asia were a bit softer. And you mentioned the pandemic, but you know, is is there kind of more um, preference for North American consumers to kind of go to the website and? What's been the split overseas for GoPro.com sales, and how are you driving more traffic there? Um, any comments you can make? Thanks. Yeah. Um, GoPro.com did, did great. Um, record quarter. Uh, up, you know, we doubled the business uh, on a year-over-year basis and up 92% uh, sequentially. So terrific performance on GoPro.com. You know, our revenue came in uh, with, within our guidance. Um, Within the split between retail and consumer, um, we were within 
uh, like five percent of our of our revenue was kind of split between it went a little bit more heavy to retail uh, than D to C. We definitely saw some slowness in EMEA and APAC channels, uh, largely related to COVID. Um, and North America did uh, do well and uh, better than what we expected and uh, made up for, uh, uh, for some of that in, in Europe and in Asia. We've also uh, taken that into account as we looked at our forecast uh, for Q1 and, and our trending on sell-through, uh, we think is uh, trending right into the 700,000 units that uh, we've provided on the commentary. Okay, great. And then and Paul, just to add a, just, just to add a, 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 a one more bit of color, uh, specifically to your, uh, does there seem to be a preference uh, with consumers for shopping offline versus online in certain regions like EMEA or Asia? Uh, and the answer to that is no. Uh, we, we definitely saw uh, strong dot-com performance and then some softness as uh, COVID lockdowns um, ramped up and uh, consumer uh, online shopping um did take a hit as a part of that. So we, we could map the softness to uh, COVID lockdowns intensifying in certain regions. Gotcha. So there, there, does not seem, there, there, there does not seem to be a, uh, uh, a headwind for us as it relates to growing our business internationally. Uh, the, the headwind is specifically the pandemic. Um, and then my last question is on, you know, the GoPro subs, very good progress there. Um, what, what kind of features are our users engaging with the most? And then next year when we kind of lap that large cohort of subs from here nine sales, what kind of gives you the confidence in, in low churn rates and retention? And, you know, are there any kind of cumbersome or, you know, high switching costs for a consumer, um, maybe related to stores that would kind of def deter them from moving off GoPro um, so subscription service? Thanks. Well, the consumer behavior uh, and their taking advantage of the various uh, the consumer insights we're showing to understand driver, um, and uh, I'm happy to say that they're taking advantage of the key uh, benefits, and that gives us a good uh, feeling as it relates to um, subscribers getting value out of the subscription. Uh, they're making use of the, the subscription benefits ongoing, uh, and that just uh, points to an engaged customer that we believe we're going to be able to do a good job of retaining. Uh, we have, as we've shared, um, very impressive uh, retention uh, and low churn rates. We're really happy with those. We've continued to drive those down as we uh, continue to improve both the Marketing and a subscription, driving awareness of the benefits so that consumers can take advantage of them, then they're happier customers, and we have better retention. And that's all moving in the right direction. So we feel really good about that. Uh, and th that's just where we are today uh, in February. And so we've got uh, a lot on tap for the rest of the year to further uh, improve uh, retention and, and keep uh, churn low. And, and Paul, the thing I guess I would add on top of it is we have that, that visibility. We are seeing solid traction uh, even in Q1 on GoPro.com. Uh, and that's also what's helping to drive up uh, our ASPs. We're seeing margin improvement. We saw it in Q4. Uh, we've given uh, a little bit of an expanded margin in our guide for 21, uh, 38 to 39%. And uh, the, the implied guidance or in our management commentary uh, would, would point to a very profitable GoPro in 2021 with solid, again, solid cash generation in the $150 million or so range. So we're very happy with how uh, the results went in Q4 and the look ahead in 21. Great. Thank you. All right, once again, that is star one to ask a question. 
If you find your question has been answered, you may remove yourself from the queue by pressing star 2. Our next question is from Andrew Urquitz with Oppenheimer and Company. Hey, gentlemen. Um, thanks for letting me ask a couple of questions. Uh, the first one, I, I guess, is uh, probably for Nick. Um, with the with the new, I guess, the new subscription, the 999 subscription, um, yeah, presumably this is trying to capture the 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 MAUs that are using the GoPro app that don't have cameras. So what what's the how should we think about that number um, as it fits into your subscription number for the year? Um, and if you could shed any light on on how you'll can hopefully convert those those folks to uh, traditional GoPro users. Sure. Thanks, Andrew. Um, yeah, we're really excited about the upcoming revamp uh, and subscription-based offering of the GoPro app. Um, you're spot on. It's a, a way for us to serve as a uh, personal content uh, solution helping users of any camera, including smartphones, get the most out of their, their personal photos and videos. Uh, we all suffer from the bottomless pit that is our camera roll. And you know the feeling when you get a great, capture a great photo or video or have one sent to you and you, you save it to your camera roll. And you have that moment where you, you wistfully look at, look at it and, and you acknowledge there's a good chance you're never going to see that again. And that, that's a very widespread problem uh, shared by everybody that uses a phone. Uh, and with a phone, they're lucky because they, they actually know where their photos and videos are. Um, and so with the, uh, the, the upcoming GoPro app revamp with the mural wall feature, it makes it really easy for you as a user to send that photo or video that you know the moment you see it, that that's something that you're going to want to keep track of and revisit later. And you send it to the app. You don't even have to open the app to, to, to have it go there. You can send it straight from your camera roll. And uh, it'll be presented to you on your mural, which serves as a chronological feed of, of your personal uh, favorite moments. And then combined with that are all of our uh, top-tier uh, powerful editing tools, auto video generation uh, capabilities, and ultimately, the GoPro app is going to scale over time as the most enabling yet simple uh, app to help you get the most out of your personal content. And we think that this is a <clears throat> significant size market globally. Uh, we think our, our brand is really well positioned to solve this problem for people. And importantly, we have the brand to drive awareness to grow um, usage of this app at what we believe will be impressive scale. Uh, it's directly in our wheelhouse where you don't have to take on uh, very much additional OPEX uh, to go and make this possible for uh, people that don't own a GoPro because we're already building this solution for GoPro users. Uh, but by you know making it subscription-based, uh, we can extend access to it to uh, anybody that owns a smartphone or another camera. And over time, we think that this is going to become a really meaningful solution for people that is uh, going to punch way above its weight class in terms of you know, its value proposition to what a user will, will pay uh, to use it on an annual basis. So I'm pretty excited about it. Yeah, got it. I, I appreciate that additional color. And I guess the next question and, I have for I guess yeah. well, <laughs> well, to the new GoPro app experience, and uh, it's a pretty significant opportunity for us to uh, market the new GoPro app experience to these quick users and migrate them over time uh, to the GoPro app. And then, of course, we have uh, that um, you know GoPro subscribers for forty nine upsell them to the uh, $10 a year functionality uh, that they'll um, – includes the mural uh, experience as well as um, a slew of premium editing tools that we're going to roll out over time. So those are just two of many growth initiatives that we've got uh, for this new subscription service. Got it. Got it. That's helpful. And, and, and I guess um, 
when I when I think about your your unit guidance uh, for for 2021, um, it it looks like it's coming in a, a, a little bit down year over year. Is that on a sell through basis? Sorry, on a sell through basis. Um, is, is that is that mostly just caution, caution around COVID, um, or is there something more to it uh, related to just you know fewer stores and and just a, a further decline in retail? Any color there would be helpful. Yeah, hi, Andrew. It's Brian. Um, it, it's related to a number of things. COVID, uh, for one, and uh, being cautious, I think as, as the world opens up, there's opportunity uh, to expand that. As you recall, you know, last year, early on in 2020, we were at about uh, 3.2 million to 3.4. We raised it up to uh, 3.6, uh, same with self through. So we have the ability to um, step it up, and, and that would increase profitability further, right, because we get a lot of financial leverage mm -hmm. from that. Um, and so that, that, I think that's that's solid upside. Um, we will also see more movement to the, to the high end, our $300, $300 and more price point, mm -hmm. and less on the, the lower end uh, as well. So um, that's helping to drive uh, AFPs. It's going to be supported in GoPro.com. That's helping with margins uh, and profitability. So um, we think, you know, it, it's it's on balance with visibility um, we have today. And I think there's uh, hopefully upside as the world uh, comes back. Got it. And, and then this last question, it, it looks like based on your guidance, your your cash balance by the end of the year is going to be you know, a, a healthy amount, one we haven't seen in a while. Um, how, how is that affecting your view on potential inve investment opportunities, whether it's M&A or internal? Um, how are you thinking about that, ca that that use of cash going forward? Yeah. Um, well, there's a few uses of cash in, in 22. We'll pay back, uh, I think, $125 million of uh, debt, right, uh, on a convert, and there's more in 2025. Uh, we, we split that up and, and actually paid some off early in Q4, um, which is good. Um, I, I think from an OPEX perspective, we said we would continue to be hawkish. We will uh, continue to invest in innovation and technology and uh, improving the website experience for GoPro.com. Uh, so those are key initiatives uh, for the company that will take investment. And there's other areas that we'll be able to uh, be more prudent and, and cut back. So we want to stay, uh, you know, in the 305 to 315 million range for OPEX in 2021. Um, and it, it's up slightly because, you know, our revenue is up too. So that, that's also contributing it uh, to go up. But uh, we're definitely going to make those investments and be prudent about uh, our cash balances. And, and, and actually, to your point, we, we we're at 328 million ending the year of 2020. We haven't had a 300 million number in cash for a number of years. So, um, you know, the cash generation in the second half was well above 200 million, uh, which was, uh, those are records for the company. Yeah, two quarters in a row where we had 100 million in operating cash flow. All right, we'll take the next question. Thank you, Nick and Brian, and I sincerely want to say congratulations on managing through a very, very, very challenging year of 2020. Um, quite, quite remarkable results. Um, I have one question for Brian and one for Nick. Um, Brian, you know, you being CFO. You know, normally we talk to you about seasonality, you know, quarter to quarter. And I realized 2020 was very difficult, and you gave in your commentary some very good 2021 outlooks. So revenues and EPS, is seasonality kind of still in place largely or with COVID lapping us? And, you know, think about vaccines being prevalent more – as we increase through the year and maybe people go on vacations and travel and do more extreme stuff later on the year, is there a chance the second half could be even 
seasonally stronger, stronger, stronger than expected? Or I'm just kind of wondering about what you built into your guidance. And then for Nick, you know, CEO, um, you know, your move to subscription model has been fantastic. Are there a, a couple of um, apps or interface items or variables, whether it be video editing or the upload function that really surpassed your expectations? It seems to really draw the subscriber base in even more. I was just kind of wondering, because I know that you have a lot of enhancements, which, you know, one, two, or three really are, you know, bringing in, uh, bringing in so much. Thank you. Yeah, hi, Jim. Thank you. Uh, let me start. Um, we expect to, on a year-over-year -year basis to grow in every quarter in 21 over 2020. The biggest growth, of course, will be in quarter one and quarter two. Um, and, and, you know, because we'll, we'll be up – our guidance implies 55 percent growth in Q1, 21 over Q1, 20. Uh, obviously, in the first half is when the pandemic hit. Of, of 20. So um, there will be some seasonality. Uh, Q2 and Q4 uh, tend to be seasonally stronger uh, for the company. And uh, uh, so you, you should expect that kind of in the modeling. Great. Thanks, Brian. And Nick, anything on the, the, the apps that really is bringing in the subs so much? Uh, yeah, it's a good question. Well, as I shared before, uh, we're happy to see that um, both our research and uh, the reality of how consumers are taking advantage of subscription benefits are aligning. Uh, of course, the, uh, the savings at GoPro.com are important, and we're seeing the lion's share of uh, lifestyle goods uh, and accessory sales uh, going to uh, subscribers who are taking advantage of the 30 to 50 percent savings that they get at GoPro.com on non-camera items. Um, that's really good to see because that shows, one, that there's a, a comprehension of those savings, uh, and two, that we're seeing subscribers pay for their uh, $49.99 annual subscription very quickly uh, with the savings that they're getting through, you know, their backpacks or their mounts and accessories for their cameras, uh, or the hats and shirts that they're buying. Uh, there's real value there, and it adds up quickly to the $49.99 annual GoPro subscription. So that's a really positive sign. Uh, but as relates to the app, uh, content backup is really important to our customers. You know, we're a, a company that helps people capture some of the most uh, exciting and meaningful moments in their lives, and they want to start, safeguard those moments. So our cloud backup uh, is a, a significant value, and we're seeing uh, good usage there. And then the editing tools uh, that we offer in the GoPro app are really important to our uh, our subscribers, and that's. people keep track of the content that they're capturing and, and generating and can easily share from their wall. And if you think it's going to be a significant enhancement to the overall experience, um, you know, building on uh, what our customers are already using and, and, and capitalizing on the feedback they're giving us of what they want to see next. So, you know, kudos to uh, our research, consumer research team. Uh, and our product teams for um, both going out and learning what our customers want from us and then going and building it for them, uh, it's, it's paying off in spades. And I, I think that's the, you know, underlying strength in the business that you see is that this is GoPro's serving a real purpose in people's lives, and we're doing a terrific job of it, and I, I think that's why you're seeing the business perform so well. Sincere congratulations to you and your team on, on a great year and looking forward to 2021. Thank you. Thank yeah, you. thank you, Jim. We're really, we're really looking forward to, to 2021 because if GoPro can perform this way amidst the pandemic, as I mentioned in my prepared remarks, um, we don't need the pan We all want the pandemic to go away for obvious reasons, but as a business, we're not sitting around waiting for that to happen. Uh, we're driving a a successful and growing business, and, and we're well poised for when the world begins to snap back.
All right, we'll take the next question from Nick Toradov with Longo Research. Yeah, thanks, guys. Um, Brian and Nick, when you guys announced your plans to transition to a direct business model in TQ, at the time, I think you expected GoPro.com to become majority of your sales in 2021. Um, you, you got it below 50% for GoPro.com in 2021, and I think the fourth quarter was the second quarter in a row where GoPro.com sales came a little bit lower than your expectations. I just wonder, has anything changed since the original uh, comment you made when you announced the plans to go direct? And, and should we think that GoPro.com um, will go? Should we expect GoPro.com to become majority of your sales at some point in time? Um, let me start with that one, uh, Nikolai. When we first talked about that back in uh, May, retail was completely shut, um, quite frankly. And we sold on our website, and we, I believe, were over 40% uh, in Q2 of 2020. Uh, and it also wasn't clear how uh, <clears throat> retail was going to come back, quite frankly, and when the pandemic was going to end. So we can have visibility on, on our own business, um, which uh, on our site, we doubled it on a year-over-year -year basis. Um, and so since then, we've seen retail uh, come back. It's still an important channel. So we have two strong channels that uh, we get product to consumers, uh, com plus the retail channels uh, globally. Um, that's actually... Uh, a real advantage, I think, from the distribution perspective uh, for the company, that we have that reach, whether it be GoPro.com uh, or retail. Um, GoPro.com is obviously a more profitable channel uh, for us, and we'll continue to drive that in subscriptions. Um, but, uh, no, we're, we're very happy with the fact that, you know, we were able to, throughout 2020, raise our numbers, and part of that was due to retail coming back, and a good chunk of it was GoPro.com uh, uh, driving quite a lot of business. Yeah, I would add to that, uh, you're never going to hear us complain about retail coming back better than expected and being a healthy channel for us. I mean, you know, thank God for our retailers, and many thanks to them for their continued support of GoPro. We've got a saying, uh, one of our core values at GoPro is strength in numbers. Right? Uh, going it alone is um, a lot riskier than when you've got uh, a number of strategic partners to help you succeed, and, and that's the case at GoPro. That said, uh, the bounce back of uh, our retail channel's uh, performance is actually helpful to GoPro because it, it's a, it reduces the risk significantly. Uh, as we continue to make investments to improve uh, our direct-to-consumer capabilities, uh, whether it's, you know, being able to do a better job of uh, direct marketing to consumers um, as, you know, more as a, an individual as opposed to, you know, just a mass market blast to everybody and you're not even sure who owns a camera or not. Those are investments that we're making that are going to yield significant Turns for us this year, uh, and as well, we're investing significantly in our uh, e-commerce platform uh, to do a much better job of merchandising the cameras, upselling uh, accessories, and again, having a better understanding of who the customer is and what they might actually want to buy from us and where they are in their GoPro life cycle. And these are all investments and developments that take time, and it's. It's fantastic that uh, our teams were able to double our uh, direct-to-consumer uh, GoPro.com revenues last year. And what uh, improvements we've got a ton done, but it's just so while we have uh, a, a strong retail uh, channel to help us drive our business while we make these investments and improve our direct-to-consumer capabilities, uh, I just I don't see how that could possibly be seen as a negative, and that, that's another way of, of answering your question. That you know, we absolutely see significant opportunities to grow our direct uh, 
business over time, and and this is a, this is a marathon, not a, not a sprint. And there's just a a, a lot of greenfield opportunity to improve our approach. Got it. Uh, then Nick, maybe a more uh, a question on on overall demand trends and and sell through. I mean. If I look at the the implied full year guidance, it sounds like you're still expecting sell through to be down in the second half of the calendar year. You know, I think most people uh, operate under the impression that there's going to be some normalization from COVID, but maybe this is you know you're thinking differently, and that's part of the the reason for for that guidance. I think if we look at the broader consumer electronics space, I, I think the expectations are that there's uh, if, if not growth for 2021, that uh, demand will be at least flat versus very challenging, uh, very, very easy compare from 2020. How are you thinking about overall demand environment for GoPro as we go forward? Uh, I'll pick that up, and then, uh, Brian, if you want to add anything. You know, we shared our demand outlook um, in, in terms of our guide. Uh, as this, I think where we differ from traditional consumer electronics per se is that um, in many ways we're tied to human activity. And the more active humans are, consumers are, uh, the more they're out and about, the more they're celebrating life and sharing experiences, uh, the more of a you know value proposition we represent to those consumers. So if you're talking about, uh, you know, uh, streaming video game sales or video game platforms, uh, you know, consoles or things that remain in the house when somebody finally goes outside and travels more and is, is more active, uh, we don't fall into that same stay-at-home consumer electronics category. Uh, so that, that, that relates to my uh, point that, we're very well positioned for to, to succeed during the pandemic, uh, and even better positioned to thrive on another level as the world, um, even if it takes baby steps, uh, bouncing back. But you can imagine the the outsized positive impact that that can have on our business. Now we're not factoring that into our guide. Uh, our our outlook is that you know the the world continues to go along the way that it's been in certain areas of the, of the world, there'll be uh, a better condition as it relates to the pandemic In others, it, it might be hit harder. Uh, but net net, we think that we're positioned to succeed um, and make no mistake. The world will bounce back at some point and we'll be there waiting. And Nick, I think the other point to make uh, is if you look at, the distribution by quarter, um, it's more evenly distributed, which is actually kind of more normal, um, at least within the you know, content. You have Q4 going up for seasonality, of course. Um, that enables us to be profitable in quarters two, three, and four. And you saw we guided uh, for basically break even, uh, plus or minus, I think, three cents in Q1. So we have the app, we think we can be. Uh, profitable in Q1, and uh, we haven't done that in uh, quite a long time. So, and, and a very profitable GoPro in 2021, and continuing to generate a lot of cash. And if if the demand profile comes back stronger, as Nick had mentioned, as the world uh, comes back, we have the opportunity to drive more more profitability and more revenue growth. But you know, we're we're, we're forecasting 20 to 25 percent up on a year-over-year basis, which uh, is pretty darn good, most of that on units, but also some on ASP as we continue to shift to the high end, a strategy we've taken on since basically 2019 uh, that's worked very well for the company uh, and for the consumers for the product they get. Okay. And, uh, thanks, Brian. And, uh, and the last question, uh, you know, Nick, uh, I think we, uh, last quarter you shared uh, some metrics about conversion rate uh, on uh, the subscription on purchases through GoPro.com. I believe, if not mistaken, that number was 80 to 85% on people who bought flagship cameras. 
maybe can you provide us an update on that metric and uh you know how should we think about conversion rates on on retail um it, it seems like it, it, you, you mentioned it's much lower i wonder if you can give us some numbers thanks and then nick can, can chime in close to 90 percent uh a conversion on gopro.com so it definitely stepped up which helped the subscriber growth uh, number. Um, and that's continued, uh, quite frankly, even into to Q1. So that's a, that's a very nice metric. And uh, organic uh, through retail is obviously much lower. And I think those rates are somewhere around uh, 7 to 12% kind of range. Uh, so obviously the lion's share uh, of subscribers is coming from gopher.com. Okay, got it. Thanks, guys. Good luck. Thank you. Thank you, Nicola. Once again, if you would like to ask a question, please press star 1 on your telephone keypad. And we'll take the next question from Eric Woodring with Morgan Stanley. Eric, your line is open if you would like to ask a question. Hi, can you hear me? Yes. Yes, we can hear you. Go ahead. Okay, perfect. Sorry about that, guys. Um, so I just wanted to follow up on one of um, Andrew's questions earlier. Just, just obviously, um, significant cash balance, um, but at the same time, you know, your CapEx um, has fallen to, I think it was $5 million in 2020. So just, I'd love to get your outlook on, on how you think about that growing, if you do think about that growing into the future, you know, why not ramp that higher as you're kind of building the business, becoming more profitable, generating more cash? Um, and then I have a follow-up. Yeah, um, a lot of the CapEx, quite frankly, is related to two things. Uh, point of purchase displays in retail, uh, which I think is a lion's share of it, uh, and then tooling and such uh, from an engineering perspective. Uh, we've been able to uh, really do a good job managing much more tightly uh, in, engi in uh, engineering capex spend. Uh, so, get on the engineering team for uh, being much more prudent and, and efficient in how we go about doing that. Um, so that's important to note. And then POP, because we're reducing retail footprint, we don't need to spend as much money on POP. And that's another reason why uh, going more direct is actually a more efficient and effective. Uh, uh, method for us to, to go to market and why it's you know better from a profitability perspective. Okay, that's helpful. Um, the second question would just be: um, I love that you're you know you're trying to solve this problem of having all these pictures and videos lost in your camera roll. I can obviously um, I, it's something I suffer from as well. Um, but I consider myself, you know, as someone that's aware of the brand. How are you guys going to, you know, get that brand awareness out to those consumers that perhaps aren't GoPro users and that are only smartphone users and perhaps don't know the GoPro brand as well? Is that, uh, you know, just, just curious how, how you guys think about going about doing that. Thanks. Well... There are a number of ways to drive awareness for apps uh, that we'll be employing that we haven't really had to do before for the GoPro app because we really only target the GoPro app uh, at hardware, GoPro hardware owners. That's true. Uh, but it's not rocket science. We've, we've had a lot of success with the Quick app, which I mentioned. Uh, we sunset that almost two years ago and it still has 8.6 million monthly active users. Uh, it's incredibly well regarded in consumer reviews, uh, very highly ranked in the app stores. Uh, and so we'll be uh, employing the same tactics that we use to grow the popularity of the Quick app to scale uh, the GoPro apps, um, the awareness of the GoPro app and its popularity outside of the GoPro community. But make no mistake, I mean, the, the GoPro uh, fan base uh, uh, it's in the neighborhood of 45 million, 46 million social followers 
uh, direct followers. And then, of course, you have the extended follower base of all the influencers, um, athletes, and celebrities that we work with. Uh, it's a very large uh, brand network that we've got that we're going to be leveraging to drive awareness of this new product that we've got. So uh, on the marketing front uh, and on the branding front, uh, we're feeling very good because uh, I think we're, we're pretty well regarded for being a strong marketing organization. Uh, and then it's all about uh, value and really solving problems for people. And as you know, um, when you have a great product, uh, and you make your, your customers successful, they also do a wonderful job of driving awareness for you through their advocacy. And because um, the, the GoPro app is centered around helping you get the most out of your photos and videos, when you're um, doing that and sharing them more often from the GoPro app, that is also going to virally drive awareness for the app. So the list goes on in, uh, in terms of the number of ways that we have to drive uh, awareness and, and, and ultimately scale uh, the GoPro app subscription into something meaningful over time. No, that's that's really helpful. Thank you for that color, Nick. Um, I guess last question for Brian. Just um, just curious, you, you guys obviously gave um, guidance for OpEx um, in 2021, but we're just curious how you're thinking about that from a sales and marketing relative to R&D, relative to GNA perspective, if you're a uh, if you're, you know, if you're growing all of those line items, if you're uh, pulling back and then uh, or, or growing some of them, thanks. Yeah, I think uh, we'll see some growth in R and D. Uh, there'll be a little bit of growth in sales and marketing, um, but um, some things we're able to spend less on uh, are basically being offset by investment, and we'll see reductions in GNA. Okay, that's awesome. Thank you, guys. Thank you. All right, it appears there are no further questions at this time. Mr. Woodman, I'd like to turn the conference back to you for any additional or closing remarks. Thank you, operator. Thank you, everyone. I'd like to reiterate our excitement for GoPro's future and for 2021 where we plan to super serve our customers through high value subscription offerings and in parallel scale GoPro's margin, profitability, and importantly, predictability. We believe we can continue to succeed during this pandemic, which puts us in a strong position for when the world begins to recover in earnest. Thank you again to all of GoPro's employees and partners who are making this possible. We're grateful for this group win. And thank you to everyone for joining today's call. We genuinely appreciate your time and support. This is Team GoPro signing off. This concludes today's call. Thank you for your participation. You may now disconnect.